let me welcome all of you, both virtual and real audience, to my short talk. I'd like to start from the broader context of aspirations of nations. All countries are motivated by twin goals of prosperity and peace or happiness. In terms of prosperity, as indicated by the fall in poverty and rise in global per capita income, is been progressing steadily. So the world is set to become richer with the drive for economic prosperity and growth. The only problem with this thinking is that nobody really knows how much will be enough. Not only so, the planetary boundaries have already been crossed. With regard to peace, if we assess by short-term trends indicated in Global Peace Index, global peace has improved. However, measurements of prosperity such as per capita income or measurement of peace by global peace index indicate external conditions. They do not really tell us about how life is experienced by human beings. Perhaps there are widespread psychological instabilities such as fear, phobia, depression, confusion, grasping, disconnectedness, isolation, insecurity and so forth, stalking the mental conditions of human beings. With the exception of clinical depression, it would be fair to say that no government has any clue, any uh, clear understanding about the level and extent of mental health problem and unhappiness felt by the people. In this context, Bhutan became far more explicit in terms of the goals of happiness and well-being. I'd like to take this opportunity to give a very rapid introduction to GNH or Cross National Happiness founded by the fourth king of Bhutan, His Majesty Jimmy Singhi Wangchuk. The GNH index or matrix measures both the subjective and objective conditions of happiness and well-being. It measures the key conditions of happiness and well-being comprising of nine domains such as psychological well-being, community vitality, balanced time use over 24 hours, health, education, culture, environment, good governance and finally psychological well-being. Now this quantitative now this quantitative framework was formulated at the command of the fifth king of Bhutan in 2006. The integration between gross national happiness and socio-economic development plans of the country takes place by incorporating GNH indicators as targets in 
the five year plan so it has uh, significant influence on the allocation of budget and investment in the country a large a number of gnh indicators are computed from perceptual or subjective data collected in the survey uh, every four years uh, this year we will also conduct another round of gnh survey a large number of gnh indicators are computed from perceptual or subjective data the subjective or perceptual data uh, is uh, a first person view of the experiences in the survey we give central importance to the response in first person so the respondents perspective are treated like the perspective of designers or artists rather than engineers which give uh, image of external reality rather than internal experience how the respondents uh, experience reality uh, is the most important because the experience at that moment captured in the survey uh, gives a relationship between the viewer that is the respondent uh, the view and the viewed that is the reality i should emphasize that the list of conditions uh, specified for happiness and well-being according to gnh concept is quite large because gnh is a maximal uh, concept unlike poverty measurement which is a concept for minimum or minimal survival uh, gnh is a maximal concept but both uh, minimal indicators minimal well-being indicators like poverty and maximal flourishing uh, concept like gnh uh, play a role side by side because we have to focus on those who have not uh, who have uh, who are facing deprivations as well as those who have met uh, material conditions well but have not yet attained happiness gnh indicators has the function of uh, tracking tracks the happiness level of one part of the country with other so uh, it can be decomposed for comparison uh, at any demographic level education hair, uh, age gender uh, or any other parameters so uh, that Focusing uh, on a particular group uh, is possible. Through GNH, there is a vigorous attempt by the government in Bhutan to balance between the material and the spiritual, between the relative and the relational. As GNH has 
nine domains, the concept and the measurement of happiness also becomes multidimensional. And the balance in the approach towards development in Bhutan is struck through balancing between the nine domains of cross-national happiness. Given that all things arise interdependently, the causes of happiness cannot be reduced and it is confirmed by research in Bhutan to few things like money, income, health or education. Now given that human beings have diverse needs, a large number of conditions needs to be prevalent in order for people to feel happy in an unbidden and spontaneous way. They need a large, uh, they need a diverse, they, they need diverse uh, conditions uh, including psychological, social, environmental, economic and communal attainments. When most of these conditions are met at a sufficient level, and not too low or not too high, but diverse conditions met at sufficient levels, then individuals can feel unexpectedly or spontaneously happy. So happiness in a way resides in the interdependence between many domains of happiness which should be present in our life and it also depends on the relationship of these domains within our lives and with the lives of other people. For research on GNH, the key thing we are trying to answer is who are unhappy people, where are they and why are they unhappy. If we can reasonably establish uh, facts concerning these three questions, we can address to lift uh, people whose threshold of happiness is very low. The main contemporary issue, or at least one of the main issues in the world today, is between materialism and GDP, emphasis on the one hand, and well-being and, and happiness on the other. The difficulty with emphasizing GDP and materialism all the time is that it has very ambivalent relationship with happiness and well-being. Materialism and GDP growth emphasizes implicitly that there is a monotonic relationship between increase in income and happiness. At an interpersonal level, those who believe in materialism and GDP also logically imply that successes and values in life must be judged in terms of acquisition of income. But it has many negative sides. in such uh, macro issues like climate change is one, but there is also negative uh, social competition, uh, negative 
social comparison, uh, social sadism in the sense that uh, those who are better off feel better because those below them are not so. And lastly, it implies also uh, social inequality. From huge and repeated data sets generated by Gross National Happiness Survey, we know that income and assets uh, play important factors in well-being and happiness, but they are not the most significant explanatory variables. If we, uh, for the moment, uh, provisionally believe that the level of happiness is tracked by uh, Cantrill ladder or, or subjective well-being uh, life satisfaction score, then the correlation, at least in the Bhutanese data set, uh, between subjective well-being and income is only 15%. In the overall regression equation, money can explain only 2.3% of the variability in subjective well-being score. So the power uh, for the um, uh, income level to explain uh, subjective well-being uh, as a proxy for happiness is very poor in the Bhutanese case. Other equally important uh, positive factors for pursuit of happiness as we found out from our research are positive emotions. Uh, social connectivity, health, education, being young, not being widowed or separated. All of these factors play a very important role independent of income level for happiness of the people as they have great influence on happiness outcome as well as happiness chances we should be paying more policy policy attention in these areas rather than maximizing GDP as a route towards happiness. I would like to conclude uh, by saying that there are various types of knowledges and we can categorize them as such. But one of the most important knowledge is the knowledge about cultivation of positive psychology, and exploring desirable mental processes with regard to cultivation of desirable mental processes concerning attention, will, focus, concentration uh, and feeling of calmness and peace. So at an individual level, I think we ought to in pursuit of happiness, develop reasonably uh, prosperous external conditions, but also very healthy internal conditions. And without these two uh, coming into balanced play, the attainment of happiness will be elusive. Thank you.